What's going on guys and welcome back to the Bacon Drinks channel here on YouTube. It's so good to be back in front of the camera guys making cocktails for you all. Uh, I've missed it. It's been about a month and a half as you all know. Hopefully y'all checked out my trailer that I dropped yesterday. That was marking the beginning of our Bacon Drinks Halloween cocktail series. And as promised, I'm going to be giving you guys a video every single day from here all the way to the end of October. Now, with that being said, if you could, go ahead and hit that subscribe button because once again, we're going to be dropping a video every single day from here until the end of October. So I don't want you guys to miss out. I got a lot of great Halloween content planned for you guys. Now, with that being said, guys, let's go ahead and get into today's video. So since this is our inaugural Halloween episode, I figured what better drink to start off with than the legendary zombie cocktail. For you guys that are already into mixology, and especially if you're into tiki, you probably already know what the zombie cocktail is. It was invented in 1934 by the legendary Don the Beachcomber. And for you guys that don't know who he is, he's like the grandfather of tiki. And I would highly recommend checking out his other recipes. A lot of them are just so delicious. And there is a little bit of mystery surrounding this cocktail, but as the lore has it, a businessman came into Don's bar one day, said he was hungover, and Don whipped him up this concoction just real quick to cure his hangover. When the man took a sip of the cocktail, he said it was like waking the dead, and thus the name for the cocktail, Zombie, was born. Now, whether or not that story is true, we will probably never know. I'm pretty sure that story came straight from Don the Beachcomber himself, and he was kind of known for embellishing his stories and kind of being a showman. What I do know is that this cocktail is absolutely delicious in every way. Honestly, it's probably my favorite cocktail ever. It's perfectly balanced, perfectly nuanced, and it is absolutely delicious. Now, word of warning, this cocktail has become infamous over the years. It was even infamous back in Don's day. That's due to how potent this cocktail is. The zombie boasts a whopping four and a half ounces of alcohol. Four of those ounces are spirit and that's even including a full ounce of 151 Demerara rum. So over the years has gained quite the notoriety. Don famously limited the cocktail to only two per person uh, at his bar, and that of course skyrocketed its popularity because I know if I heard of a bar serving a drink that was so strong and so deadly that you could only drink two or the limit was only two at the restaurant, I would definitely be curious and go check out what it was all about. And even today in tiki bars all across the country, they still adhere to that two drink limit. And in my opinion, the zombie cocktail is the perfect cocktail. Never have I tasted a drink with so many ingredients, but yet was so nuanced and so balanced at the same time. It is an absolutely magical concoction. Let's go ahead and get to making the drink. All right guys, so we're gonna be building the drink in a shaker tin today. And then we're going to do three quarters of an ounce of fresh squeezed lime juice. All right. And then we're gonna do a quarter of an ounce of fresh squeezed grapefruit juice. And it's also worth noting, this is actually not the original recipe by Don the Beach Comer. I'm actually doing an adapted version by Smuggler's Cove. In my opinion, the Smuggler's Cove zombie recipe is a little more balanced than Don's original, but the ingredients are still pretty much the same. They just change the quantities just a little bit. But don't worry, I'll put both recipes in the description for you guys, and you can check it out for yourself. There is minor, minor differences. And oh, I almost forgot, I usually do these first. I need to do two dashes of my Angostura and Absinthe mixture. Perfect. All right guys, next we're gonna do one teaspoon of my homemade grenadine. Don't worry, the recipe is super easy. I'll put it in the description as well. But if you guys wanna opt for a store-bought grenadine, uh, be sure to get a premium brand such as BG Reynolds or Jack Ruby. All right guys, next we're gonna do a quarter of an ounce of two to one Cinnamon syrup, I will also put the recipe for this in the description as well. All right. And then we're gonna do a half ounce of John D. Taylor Velvet Falernum. This stuff is absolutely delicious. You can also use other Falernum brands such as Bitter Truth and Maggie's Farm. All right guys, with that being said, we're almost done. We're on the home stretch. Next, we get to our powerful rum base. And first, we need one and a half ounces of a Puerto Rican rum. I'm reaching for the Bacardi Ocho today. I like a nice and aged Puerto Rican in my zombie. Bacardi Ocho is absolutely delicious, by the way. All right. All right, next we're gonna be doing one and a half ounces of Jamaican rum. I'm using Caruba today. I'm using Caruba in this one because it has a light funk to it and it's got some molasses notes that I really enjoy. All right. Perfect, we're almost done, guys. And last but not least, on top of that three ounces, 
of 80 proof rum we just poured in there. We still got one full ounce, you heard that correctly, one full ounce of Hamilton 151. All right. All right, guys, that's it for the body of the cocktail. I'm gonna feel like I'm, I'm out of breath. That was so many ingredients. But next, let's add our ice. All right, guys, we're gonna be using three heaping scoops of Sonic Pebble Ice. I'm using three scoops to really just bring down that temperature when we shake and add a sufficient level of dilution because we got a, a lot of ingredients and a lot of powerful ingredients in this drink. All right, before we get to shaking, let's go ahead and get our glass ready. If you guys are curious as to what kind of glass this is, uh, this is one of my favorite glasses that I have in my collection. It's called a Napoli glass. Hopefully I'm saying that correctly. It's spelled N-A-P-O-L-I, and they look absolutely amazing. All right, let's put a seal on our tin and get to shake. All right, that should be good. All right, ah, it's smoking. All right, we're gonna pour unrestrained into our glass. Look at that. Perfect, still got some room for ice. All right. And now of course, let's fill the rest of the way up with ice. You may need to press it down just a little bit. And it is worth noting that uh, the zombie cocktail is normally served in a zombie or a Collins glass. I just opted for this glass today because it's not only is it one of my favorite in my collection, I was actually served a zombie cocktail at Undertow in Phoenix in one of these glasses. If you guys ever get a chance to visit Undertow in Phoenix, it's an absolutely phenomenal bar, by the way. I'll try to include some pictures. All right, we're good there. All right, now it's time to garnish. We'll be garnishing with some mint sprigs today. As I say every episode, I grow these in my garden, and I'm kind of lucky. It hasn't gotten too cold yet. It was getting really hot there for a while, and most of the mint died, but now it is back. And I'm so thankful. All right, now that we got a healthy mint plus, let's go ahead and express our mint. You can do that by slapping it up against your hand. Perfect. Now let's go ahead and feed these stems. I see a lot of people who make zombie cocktails, they leave the stems on, like long stems, because it looks kind of you know, more ominous as it goes all the way down the side of the drink. And there it is, guys, the legendary zombie cocktail. All right, let's go ahead and give it a taste. And I actually got some straws now. Oh, these are some bamboo straws. I forget what brand, I apologize. I'll put them in the description. All right, let's go ahead and put it down in there. All right, let's express our mint real quick and go ahead and give it a try. Mm. Man, that is just so good. It's delicious in every way. It's actually been a long time since I've had one of these. Uh, since they're so potent and so strong, I try not to make a habit out of drinking them. And usually when I do, you know, it's kind of like a special occasion. It's like a treat, you know? So I'll slowly kind of sip on it as the night progresses and it's just absolutely delectable. First off, I'm getting the rum, of course, as you can probably imagine, but I'm not getting the rum as much as I think I would. Like, uh, you would think all the rum in this cocktail would completely blow out your palate and just make your head explode, because there's just so much in it. But it's actually a lot more subtle than you would think. It's a little forward, but it's still very subtle. And next, I'm getting notes of absinthe. Uh, even though we only put two dashes in there, it's still fairly potent. And I also like that my zombie cocktail, uh, the absinthe taste, and some people put herb saint in theirs. I'm actually used regular absinthe today. Um, I think it's like a trademark flavor of a zombie. And next, I would say I'm definitely getting our sweeteners. Um, I'm getting some notes of that uh, John D. Taylor Falernum. It's got a lot of clove in that, so I'm definitely tasting that as well. It's absolutely delicious. And then I'm also getting, you know, some subtle notes from the cinnamon syrup and the grenadine. Uh, just, just, you know, just a little bit of sugar there. And there's just enough sweetener in this drink to kind of balance out the, the power of the rum and the tartness of the citrus. And in summation, guys, this cocktail is just absolutely delicious. And it really just tastes like a sum of its parts. It's just absolutely incredible. You can taste just about everything that you put in the tin, you can taste it in the drink. It's just absolutely incredible in every way. It's perfectly balanced, perfectly nuanced, and in my opinion, once again, the perfect cocktail. All right, guys, that's it for today's video. If you liked the video, be sure to hit the like button. If you wanna see more of my content in the future, be sure to hit the subscribe button. And if you could, go ahead and leave me a comment. And by the way, it actually is gonna be my birthday very, very soon. I'm turning 32. So if you guys could, uh, please leave a comment. Uh, you don't have to say happy birthday or anything like that. I'm not a, I'm not a narcissist or anything crazy like that. But uh, you know, it would be much appreciated. I feel like I'm kind of getting old. I'm past my 30s at this point. I'm not old, but I'm not young either. So, you know, it is what it is. I'm at the point where I can only have one zombie cocktail in an evening. I used to be able to have two, but uh, I think one, one's definitely my limit as of now. 
But anyway, guys, thank you so much for all of your support. I really appreciate the, uh, all the comments y'all have left over each video um, and all the support you've given me. Uh, it's been absolutely incredible, and hopefully we can continue that. But once again, be sure to subscribe to the Bacon Strings channel. We're coming out with a video every single day between now and the end of October. And as always, guys, my name is Patrick Bacon, and I will actually see you guys tomorrow. As I like to think, in the long history of the world, that there are only a few generations. Sounds like someone breaking in! It's just a storm, Dick. Sit down. Oh my god! It appears the Pentagon has been breached. Zombies. 